Uh, hi, a very good morning. And uh, what a lovely day it is. Uh, bright sunny day and uh, a very good morning to everyone and a very warm welcome from Ratna Sagar. Thank you for joining us uh, on a Friday morning. And uh, we, are, we were, uh, I would like to first thank all the participants and all the dear teachers and educators for just, you know, uh, uh, participating in a story, story writing competition with uh, so much heart love. Uh, we are, uh, we were overwhelmed to receiving so many stories uh, and so many wonderful stories uh, for this competition. So deep gratitude uh, from Ratna Sagar. And uh, today uh, is a very interesting and a very beautiful day. And today we are going to, of course, uh, you know, have an amazing webinar. And uh, this webinar is, uh, you know, going to talk about uh, how we can connect children with the language uh, of English, with English language. And just, uh, 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 I would like to introduce our guest. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, you know, uh, I would like to welcome everyone. And we have two esteemed guests with us as well. So let me just introduce them. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Lovejoy. Uh, today, and uh, he is uh, an assistant professor of English at St. Joseph's College, Trichy. And uh, we are very, very thankful to you uh, for you know sparing your time and uh, coming here on this platform and sharing your views on English language and how children can connect English language, uh, can get connected with English language in these uh, pandemic times when there is a lockdown. So thank you for uh, you know sparing your valuable time and being us with uh, being with us here, and uh, a little bit about him. Uh, he is an uh, of course he holds a PhD degree in English language teaching from Madras University, and uh, he has uh, done uh, a lot of work. Uh, he's co-authored six books in English language teaching, and with a you know vast career of two decades, more than two decades, he has also co-edited two books on soft skills, and uh, he has published several research papers and research articles in a uh, very uh, renowned journals including a Springer Open and Modern English Teacher. And uh, five of his books are also being uh, used as textbooks for undergraduate and postgraduate students in various colleges. And uh, needless to say, uh, he is a very renowned, uh, you know, uh, he is a very renowned resource person, and he has conducted more than 200 faculty development programs. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, we are really happy to have you uh, here. And uh, uh, welcome, welcome, sir. Yes. And uh, today, uh, you know, before I uh, hand over the entire session to sir, uh, let me just talk about a little uh, about, um, so the storytelling, uh, sorry, story writing competition that we had introduced for teachers, uh, we wanted to uh, really, uh, get inspired by all the thoughts of our educators and uh, during this pandemic times uh, you know these challenging times uh, we often see that uh, uh, little negative uh, thoughts come in and we thought it's a good idea to have a positive feeling and uh, for this positivity uh, we shared a few story prompts with all our teachers and uh, very beautifully, like I said, that we were overwhelmed with all the responses and the kind of entries that we got. And I'm sure that our uh, respected jury definitely had a very hard time in uh, judging and uh, actually, you know, deciding on the winners as well. But uh, reading all the stories uh, definitely inspired us and brought us that, uh, you know, that positivity, a uh, ray of hope and a positivity feeling in these uh, difficult times. So thank you so much for that, uh, all the educators. And uh, thank you for joining again for this webinar. And uh, a very interesting webinar, like I said, uh, on the topic, keeping children connected with the English language. And uh, definitely, sir, is uh, going to cover you, uh, cover a lot of uh, different aspects of English language, uh, you know, because children are, again, stuck at home, they are around the clock during the pandemic, and how they can interact with English language and hone their skills. 
and uh, so that you know when the life becomes normal when normal things resume normal school resumes children are going out then they are absolutely ready and uh, they don't feel any uh, that you know there is any learning gap or there is any gap in communication as well and uh, in this covid crisis how uh, you know how uh, he envisions the possibilities of teaching and learning english uh, a lot of scaffolding techniques and uh, simple ideas that you know uh, uh, you know can parents can actually do with the children to acquire english language skills at home and uh, definitely doable learning activities uh, so these are the things that uh, dr lovejoy is going to cover uh, in our session and uh, not wasting any more time again a very warm welcome to everyone and i hope that you are going to definitely enjoy this session as much as we are going to do and uh, welcome dr lovejoy thank you for joining us and sparing your valuable time and i would really uh, like uh, i request you to take over the session and start your wonderful webinar and uh, definitely uh, all the participants uh, uh, must be eager to you know uh, know the results know the who the winners are of the competition so our uh, very uh, accomplished uh, mr nadeem ansari he has also joined uh, the webinar with us and uh, he is international marketing and sales manager of blick e learning and uh, from australia and uh, thank you thank you mr nadeem for joining uh, with uh, joining us for this webinar and uh, yes and we i really uh, extend a hearty welcome to him uh, you know for uh, sparing uh, his valuable time again and from a different time zone he's joining with us and uh, thank you so much i'm sure that the teachers the educators the participants are definitely going to uh, you know uh, really like this that somebody from australia has uh, joined us for the uh, you know the announcing the winners and uh, i think the technology has uh, done this uh, good thing for us that at least uh, uh, we can go beyond boundaries uh, even virtually even though we are not able to travel uh, you know ahead uh, travel outside our homes we are sort of locked down in the homes but uh, a very good thing that you know the virtual platform has given us the opportunity to connect uh, even beyond boundaries so that is a wonderful thing and uh, yes uh, all the participants would be eagerly waiting for dr lovejoy and uh, he is here so not miss uh, wasting any much time any more time uh, dr lovejoy handing over the entire session to you sir thank you so much that allows me to share the screen uh, disabled could you please enable share screen sharing please sure sure sir so please try yeah right uh Good morning, all of you. And uh, uh, it's a privilege to be here in this meet, meeting you all. Obviously, almost at the start of the new academic year. So, before I start, let me personally thank uh, Dr. Priyanka for beginning the day on a positive note, because I've got too much of negativity in store uh, in the form of slides. So uh, I think to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that beginning of a bright sunny day, uh, in fact, I hope uh, will be there till uh, the end of my presentation because I'm a bit worried uh, with the connectivity uh, been on and off uh, since morning, and with this number almost over just over 500 participants, the stakes are so high. So I only pray that things go uh, well. So I'd like to personally also thank uh, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, Raghu and his team for having uh, considered me uh, and uh, giving me uh, this wonderful opportunity to uh, meet all the teachers because uh, the happiness of uh, a teacher is to really share 
his or her experience and knowledge with the fellow teachers. So this opportunity was given to me by Ratna Sagar. Uh, I'm greatly uh, in that. We have some around 45 minutes or so. Uh, and again, I pray that I'll be able to hold on uh, till uh, 45 minutes due to uh, certain personal reasons. Right, uh, I've uh, titled uh, the talk as uh, you know, Connecting, uh, you know, Keeping Children Connected with uh, the English uh, uh, Language for the reason that most often if uh, students, uh, you know, come to schools, uh, they get to listen to teachers, they get to learn uh, English, because as we know, it goes without saying that English uh, uh, is the most important uh, language, especially on all uh, counts. So uh, with uh, this lockdown, uh, students seem to have also have a lockdown with regard to the English language. So we have to, as teachers, uh, you know, make way uh, for students to really open up to a language because any language is a skill. And most often language uh, with regard to the English language, it's all about uh, communication in general, it on all skills, uh, but primarily it's uh, communication from our end. And that when that skill is not practiced quite often, uh, there is a possibility that students might find it later uh, to really continue with what they learned in school. So here, of course, I've put together a few slides to help you with uh, making students a bit of a connect with the language. Right, as I said, got a bit of negativity. I then have to having put these slides together uh, with much difficulty. Uh, I thought I could have uh, uh, you know, made the slides a bit more, uh, you know, positive uh, in nature, given uh, the conditions. Too. However, it's always uh, better to take the bull by its horns than running away from it. So uh, I've just got a uh, task here. I don't know whether uh, the chat is enabled. If it is not, please do so. Uh, if you look at the scariest word or expression, uh, you know, uh, in the world today, of course, without doubt, it's uh, Corona virus, but then what other word that comes to your mind when I, you know, when I ask you this, uh, you know, uh, question, which according to you is the scariest word apart from coronavirus today? And just make use of this uh, chat box uh, to respond to. It'll uh, take a few responses. Pandemic, <laughs> black fungus. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. The uh, death rates. Fine. So, what uh, pandemic, black and even white uh, fungus, and then the death rate is almost on a daily basis. I think some positive news that it's, uh, you know, slowing down. But a uh, word that used to be positive, unfortunately, has turned negative. That is, uh, you know, you test positive. But there's one other word uh, that has caught my attention and is, uh, you know, as uh, someone related to education. That word to me, apart from coronavirus and positive, uh, is personally uh, a bit of a worry for me. That is new normal. Uh, apart, from, you know, except that coronavirus positive and uh, normal are simple words. You know, you know, on a, a different uh, day, in a different context, these would be very positive words, optimistic words rather. But they've uh, now become a bit uh, negative and pessimistic. In this. this new normal, which we have uh, started using, I don't know how uh, long or how far this new normal has been. But of course, when I was just searching for the visuals, I was trying to make coronavirus aesthetically appealing so that it's not that, you know, terrifying to uh, look at. But I just wanted to, 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 to get the response from you because to know, understand your perspective on the scariest word. To me, it's not corona positive, but the new normal looks as if it's a worrying uh, trend because uh, uh, I think uh, Bill Gates in his uh, 2015 uh, talk, TED talk, he predicted uh, the pandemic. Uh, but now he has also come up with another prediction 
And uh, the sixth point that he says it, uh, you know, it's, it will take a long time for us to go back to normals. Now, which means that you know, whether or not it's going to you know, happen is a different thing altogether. But one thing is for sure that uh, when post COVID, uh, there may be a few changes. When, it, when we look at uh, the English language teaching or classrooms or teaching in general, we are definitely going to have some uh, issues altogether. There are some changes, at least 10 to 20% of what we are going to look at is going to be uh, online. Even the, uh, you know, uh, the MSRD has already decided 60, 40, 40% online and 60 uh, off. So more or less, we are going to have some online, uh, you know, trend going on even uh, post pandemic. But uh, leaving that aside, uh, if you uh, look at it, that you know, uh, this pandemic has had uh, its own effect on our lifestyle. If I ask you a simple question, or I don't know whether the chat is enabled, so I'll just you know uh, go without uh, the chat just to you know, uh, answer this a talk. Um, if you look at the lifestyle, if I ask you a simple question today, you know, which day of the week is today? Many of us might find it difficult to really uh, know, give the answer. Is it Tuesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday? It may take some time for us to really come to the uh, answer. So uh, just... I think maybe participants... So, uh, has, uh, just, has the chat been enabled, ma'am? Just... Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. I have yes, had two sir. connections and one I just lost it. So just <laughs> give me a minute for that. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so most of the participants have been writing Friday. <laughs> Uh, how much time did it take to respond to that, ma'am? I uh, just I can use you for that particular. Thing. So, how, how much time uh, has the first participant taken to respond to that question? Uh, I think uh, just a few seconds. Sec few seconds. <laughs> Which has to has to be not more than two uh, seconds, but of course, yes. yes. Some some of us might have uh, forgotten. Now, uh, related to that, I've got another question that there is a possibility that we even forget uh, which day uh, week is uh, today. Uh, that that particular uh, mindset, what is it called? When you forget the day of the week, uh, which well, there is a word to denote that particular expression, what is it called? Can anyone respond? You can just uh, you know, read, read the uh, response out to me. Uh, when you forget the day of the week. Somebody has written preoccupied, uh, absent-minded, absent-minded, stress. No, <laughs> it, ends with, it ends with day. The word ends with day. And I was not uh, aware of the word, but only after COVID hit, hit us, I just have uh, I don't I'm aware of the existence of this very word. And the word is, uh, in fact, blurs me. I don't know how many of you have experienced that, that often we forget which day uh, it is. To a large extent, uh, it has had uh, the impact on our own uh, minds. The second uh, issue we have with regard to COVID uh, is um, the board of education. Uh, I never ever imagined that I would uh, go online uh, because I've uh, you know, uh, read against the use of technology, especially when it comes to uh, teaching and learning. Uh, we have to have a look at our students always and interact with them, and especially when it comes to uh, teaching and learning English. It's always good to have our students with us and then you know, educate them, scaffold them uh, to a uh, large extent. But um, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, we have to live with it because uh, to a large extent, technology is growing with us and that online learning is going to stay here as another mode of education. And it's obviously uh, coming at great time as, so that's another, uh, you know, uh, development uh, because of uh, COVID-19. The uh, academic year 2020, 
uh, 21, we had around 80% of the classes uh, you know, handled online. And uh, many of you would agree with me that we had uh, problems uh, with this online mode of teaching. Because if it is offline, you're on a pedestal, of course, we assume different roles as a teacher. And that students are in front of us, we know what's happening. But uh, when it comes to online learning, I was told my, by my colleagues, because some, some of them are very uh, in good touch with students, that students usually have two mobile phones. One, they log in, and the login phone is usually their parents' mobile phone. And the other, they play games. I would like to you know, quote, unquote the word uh, games, because it has got something to do with reading it as well that they multitask and most often their focus is on playing games and not listening to our lectures. Some of them do record uh, the lectures and uh, you know when time permits, they listen to the lectures. But then again, uh, preparing for online classes is uh, much more uh, time consuming than delivering a lecture of online. And if you look at teaching methodology, one of the positives uh, of, uh, with regard to teaching methodology uh, is that uh, teachers have uh, really done a wonderful uh, job. In, uh, hats off to all those teachers who innovated a lot uh, with uh, limited resources they have had with them. And uh, these visuals are a testimony to how uh, creative teachers uh, could uh, really be. Sometimes it looks funny, but the effort taken by students, the teachers, to really do something with, uh, with, you know, with, with uh, whatever resources they have, again, is worth, uh, you know, uh, appreciation. But I have a question here: that if you look at these three visuals, what comes to your mind? What is your observation with this, with these three visuals, which are on display? Three teachers arguably teaching three different subjects. Uh, what is your response? Just what you, you know, based on your observation of these three visuals. Uh, can you just change your statement or so here? Just... Creativity, tireless efforts of teachers, innovation. Great. Necessity is the mother of invention. Inventions, okay. Making use of technology effectively. Right. Now, uh, more or less, uh, yeah. Yeah, ma'am, please. Teachers adopting to, to new challenge. Uh, yeah. new ch yes, to challenges. Uh, coming up with innovative ideas to overcome challenges. Best use of right. available resources. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Now, there are two ways of looking at this, at these visuals. If you look at the visual here, uh, it talks about the efforts. It just, you know, uh, gives us an idea about the efforts taken by teachers to uh, adapt to the changing times. But the other perspective with regard to teaching methodology is that of the minds of the teachers who are unwilling to change their teaching methodology. If you look at all three teachers, you would find that only the mood has changed, but the teaching methodology here remains exactly the same. Even otherwise, on offline mode, these teachers would, do, would be doing exactly the same. All that they are doing is to have a wire medium through which they telecast or they, you know, uh, convey their ideas to the students. They haven't. They haven't changed the way they teach according to the demanding times is again my observation with, with due respect to the efforts taken by the teacher but on the negative side the idea the the, the, uh, the impression i get of these uh, teachers is that you know they are unwilling to change the content unwilling to change the way in which they put forth the ideas, the content, uh, the concepts to the students. It could have been slightly, uh, slightly different. Uh, sometimes they even have got, uh, you know, they, they, they purchased uh, 
boards and then they have again made a classroom out of their own uh, homes you know, all together is again another uh, you know uh, dark side of that particular effort taken by it's time that we look at things differently it's, it's high time that we look at the way we teach our students differently as we can at times have lectures but cannot have it for all uh, you know days and all times whenever we meet our students because we know for sure that even inside a classroom when we deliver a lecture they are not going to listen to us completely. There are going to be distractions. And at home, it goes without saying, uh, there are other more possibilities and too many distractors, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, 360 degree around them. And therefore, being humane, uh, they are they tend to distract from. So therefore, engaging the students, connecting them, connecting them with what we do uh, online, again, is a challenging task. So this scenario, the current scenario is that we may have to put up with this education uh, for a longer period of time. Maybe the percentage of it may come down when it comes to on and offline, but uh, the online teaching and learning is here to uh, So it's, it's, uh, it's, the onus is on the teachers to change uh, according to the demands of the parents. Uh, we have to teach students. Sometimes we do ask our students to, uh, you know, uh, turn the video uh, on with us. But men, uh, quite often, students do have connectivity issues that, you know, uh, with the video on, consumes a lot of data. So we also experience the same issue with our own uh, students. But it uh, looks as if that uh, you know teachers to a large extent have found some way to uh, engage the students meaningfully. Now let me narrow down to uh, the teaching of uh, uh, you know, English, or teaching and learning of the English language. Uh, unlike the other subjects, languages have got its own issues altogether because it's a soft skill. And that though any subject today, uh, the focus is mostly on skill development. The English language, language being an abstract entity, uh, you know, this, uh, this online mode, uh, you know, puts a lot of challenge, uh, responsibility, obviously on the shoulders of the uh, teachers who have to frequently innovate to really meet the uh, meet the demands. So you have here uh, most often teachers look at it as a subject, but now that most of the teachers are aware of the fact that uh, you know English is not a subject, but it is in fact a skill to be uh, taught and acquired by the students, and that uh, we have to have a lot of human interaction between the teacher and the students, between the teacher and the student, and among students uh, them. And at least that interaction will sustain the, you know, uh, interest of the students. But when it comes to teaching and learning English, we have uh, a textbook, we have, uh, you know, uh, content, we have materials already prescribed, and we also have to find a way to connect it to what happens at home. Because if you look at the current situation now, we've got parents either working or otherwise at home, siblings at home, everyone is at home and that's doing their own work. Uh, sometimes uh, some in the kitchen, sometimes some with their laptop on doing his or her work. And the students are uh, you know, trying to uh, get the assignments done. And sometimes some serial or movies or news report or anything of that kind happens and everything happens simultaneously. And with all these, we have to find a way to make learning a bit more contextualized and meaningful to, to our students. And that too, you know, so that's again a challenging task. I thought that I could just, uh, you know, do something about it. Uh, what you have here is in fact a screenshot of a, a news bulletin. Uh, Look at it from BBC that uh, <clears throat> news anchor and uh, preferably someone from MHRA is responding to the questions asked. Now, being 
um, an English language teacher. What is it that I can do? I presume that uh, you know this is something that uh, mother or father is just watching the news on TV. And that uh, teacher can make a child, if he or she doesn't have any choice, that even if, with what happens at home, that make them look at it from skill acquisition, make them look at it from language acquisition is something that we can, uh, you know, the way we can engage our students. Say, for example, I'm just trying to uh, you know, uh, look at it from a phoneme to a uh, discourse with a simple uh, task or uh, simple material uh, like this. So uh, I, I'll require a lot of help from the other end because uh, you know, since uh, I'm on a presentation mode, I'm able to see the uh, chat. So please do read the answers for me. Uh, here sure. we have spot read of the answers. Uh, now, this is what uh, you have to uh, do. But there are some uh, words on display, and just to definitely uh, 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 read some words here. The studio, West London, and it ends with MHRA. And all that I want you to do is to just type the syllable that has the phoneme k. Type a syllable that has the phoneme k. All the syllables that have a phoneme if the uh, syllable is repeated, say for example, I've got uh, vaccine twice. So if it is repeated, you, you you can just ignore it. Otherwise, just type in the you know the syllable alone, not the entire word, but the letters uh, which comprise that particular syllable. So go ahead with the answers. I want you to type in, uh, drop in your answers in the chat box, uh, especially the syllables which comprise the phoneme k. There are at least five or six such uh, syllables. So there, there is the, so there is C, that's K, there is a CH okay. A C C C C K C H C H C H in bio and tech, okay. C K O C K C C C H C K Which These syllable are... does that CK stand for? I'm not very sure. CO, yes, Corona. That CO, that syllable stands for K. Duck, CK as in K. Duck. No, those, those words must be there on screen. Only those words on display. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody has uh, uh, tried explaining. Yeah, right. I understand. I understand. I understand. To, to back Not up. asking you to. Did it. Right. So uh, the you've got vac vaccine uh, uh, and then Fine. UK that has already been said. Yes. Fine. Then you've got. Corona and then vaccine and then breaking ping is another uh, cell, right? Uh, most often students, uh, you know, have these problems with this, uh, you know, letter sound correspondence. English being a stress time language, that uh, teachers find it, uh, students find it very difficult to find the connect between the uh, the relationship between the alphabet and the some. That's the reason we've got two different alphabets. One is with the letters and the other is with the phonemic uh, symbols. It's only six letters for writing and four, four phonemes for speaking. Right. Let, let me move on to the next. And you can even uh, make it still uh, focus on phonemes, which would be problematic for students. But each state has its own issues with phonemes. Uh, depending on the mother tongue influence on their uh, speaking of English. 
so therefore you can focus on those sounds have them some words display or give the sounds and ask the students to listen to news and um, you know uh, take a list of words that have got those challenging or problematic sounds in it the idea is that whatever they uh, get to listen to whatever they uh, get to see or watch uh make them uh, look at it from the learning perspective make them look at it from acquiring sounds or words or expressions from those is something that they uh, is the need of the uh you can even ask them to look at the visual and find out whether these sounds are there in the visuals as well if you look at the lake or photograph and things like that you can even uh, take it further to uh, to the you know, you know uh, teaching them adjectives i've got a word here news anchor uh, look at the news anchor and can you supply some words that qualify the news anchor what comes to your mind when you look at the news anchor just uh, type in your response please <clears throat> reporter news reader Okay. Well, proactive active news anchor. very good confident. Pro proactive wonderful confident, confident. involved fluent smart confident sharp expressive bold serious sincere stylish flair energetic informative spontaneous knowledgeable right i think you have uh, uh, really exceeded my expectations with your observations uh all those are very apt uh you know uh, i think you've keenly observed the facial expression uh of uh, of the news anchor so from from sincere to knowledgeable to sharp uh, i think all are wonderful choices i think there are at least 15 different expressions i could get from uh, the audience again uh, would help students when they look at some you know on screen or even around they'll definitely be tempted to a large extent or motivated to to just you know uh, describe those uh, people or at least you know uh, recall those words they have uh, so there as i said uh, repeatedly i'm saying that the idea is to connect the students to, uh, to the language through what happens uh, around them sometimes some of which are uh, you know uh, which they are they are in control of and sometimes they they they, they cannot what to do what they want all that sometimes students children have to do is to what something that their parents or their siblings the elder or younger ones are uh, you know prefer ones prefer uh what so therefore this again will help them engaged in some uh language based activity and extending it further you have uh, to uh your right uh, you know uh, someone who takes uh, you know the questions from the news anchor look at have a close observation of the of the room he is in and his facial expression uh, as well study the room carefully and his face and what do you infer from it when you infer uh, you know as i said you can also scaffold them with some give them some help here they've got some characteristic traits some of which are positive and some negative you can choose from the list given uh, you know to your left or prefer uh, you know uh, using your own uh, you know vocabulary instead what comes to your mind when you look at this uh, the, the arrangement the backdrop as well as the personality what character traits that come to your mind when you look at this person mm. <clears throat> so loyal optimistic composed kind 
and at the same time uh, impatient. well-dressed, greedy, submissive. Right. Vicious. Uh, there is always a... Right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. I think we want out of time. So I'm almost uh, running short of time. Now, the interesting part is that when you give them the words, students tend to, uh, you know, go for that scaffold. They pick up answers from there. It's not a problem. All that we can do is to make them substantiate their answer. When someone says greedy, we can ask them later on if at all it's a, a, you know, a at home assignment or anything else. But later on, when they come up with the answers, you can ask them to give the rational for their choice. When someone says greedy, you can ask that student to tell you why they consider this fellow greedy or optimistic or loyal in nature. Sometimes students uh, students come up with answers which you've never thought of, that they'll have some clues based to a large extent work like detectives and then give us uh, reasons for which, which we have not thought about at all. Again, the idea is to, whenever they look at it, they apply what they have learned. It could be something, these words could be something that have already been there in the uh, textbook or something that you have decided to focus on when these students are at home. Again, the idea is to encase them meaningfully in whatever they come across at home. Right? That's about the uh, character trait. It can also be, you can also convert it into a question and answer session where the news reporter asks questions, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the representative from MHRA responds to that question. From beginning with a phone, you can end with a conversation, end with a question and answer session. You can also ask the student to write a paragraph what they've learned, uh, which, is, which will be a metacognitive exercise, or uh, a report on uh, the uh, you know, Pfizer uh, vaccine as well. Some you know, uh, researching of a sort they can do and then write a report on that as well. Or you can ask them to change the context, change the roles of these two, and then ask uh, them to write conversations as well, which would give a bit more room for students to think imaginatively what I'm saying, trying to uh, say here is uh, that, you know, uh, when it comes to teaching and learning, there are a few things that we have to uh, remember, especially at this testing times. One is that students require a lot and lot of scaffolding. Uh, already. Now, scaffolding is something that you already know, uh, almost in the 1950s or 60s that Vygotsky came up with this zone of proximal uh, development where to have that proximal zone, uh, you know, he uh, suggested scaffolding. It's in fact uh, an analogy from uh, from uh, you know the construction ground where when you uh, build, uh, you know, when a building is built, that you have the scaffold a support altogether. And after a while, uh, you know, you remove that when you say, when you have when you when you when you're sure that the building is intact, that nothing will happen to it, that you remove that wooden support that you have uh, in usually supporting that construction. Likewise, children also today require a lot and lot of scaffolding from the teacher and from the parents as well, because as I said, today the situations are slightly different that we have to take uh, the, you know, uh, we have to uh, also uh, uh, rope in the parents to support the children uh, as well. Uh, that to a large extent will also give hope for the parents that there's something meaningful happening at school and that uh, they also get to know, you know, take individual care of the kids as to what they do uh, at home as well. So it's in fact a temporary support that uh, teachers give depending on depending on their own uh, you know proficiency the support can be verbal the support can be procedural uh, sometimes some students understand the uh, procedures you that come along with any task that you give students to learn and the support can also be situational in nature or even to some extent the different ways in which people scaffold but the idea is that students 
since since they uh, they are away from us and that they they really don't know what happens uh, when they learn the issues that they face it's better that we always look at it from that perspective that students require a lot of assistance from us but uh, when it comes to scaffold, you can always think of this expression, uh, which is called the curse of knowledge. Uh, some of you might be familiar with this uh, with this expression, uh, the curse of knowledge. I think uh, uh, this refers to you know there's there's this this uh, experiment done uh, by uh, you know uh, with someone who knows a song. You know, uh, runs that song in the mind silently and simultaneously taps for that song. Now, the one who sings a song silently, the tapping would be meaningful to them and they can easily recognize the song. Whereas the ones who are listening only to the tap of the singer, the silent singer, uh, won't be able to understand what this tab is all about in the first place. That's what happens when we teach also, maybe happening even now, that I take it for granted that you know what scaffolding is. And then from that perspective, I try to explain scaffolding. But I have to, as a teacher, also keep in mind that the listeners may have different issues altogether. Keeping that in mind, uh, we will have to find different ways to uh, to help students understand the task and complete the task without uh, without much uh, hiccup, which is going to be a challenging task. The second one, as a teacher, you have to remember is that things are now slightly changing. But of course, not now. It was already there in literature that uh, autonomous learning students who learn on their own are, the learn, are better learners than the one who really learn with a lot of help. So with the you know, popularity of online learning, it is better that we give importance to autonomous learning as well because of online education and uh, because of the uh, you know, uh, course that we have. It's first knowledge. Uh, I'm extremely sorry about that. So autonomous learning in the sense that today, uh, you know, there are many software uh, which assist children uh, learn language on their own and the different publishers have come up with different, uh, you know, products uh, as well to help students learn autonomously. So that you have an inbuilt teacher in it that everything that the child interacts, interact, gets to interact with the software uh, itself. The third is that of the discrete uh, integrated dichotomy. Some think that language should be taught discreetly, listening uh, separately, reading separately, and so on and so forth, or uh, you know, speaking separately and writing separately. And some would say that you know, uh, communication doesn't happen discreetly. Communication happens you know, in an integrated manner. Sometimes you may, you may have to listen to them. Meanwhile, you may have to take them notes and that you may have to respond to uh, them. All of them happen simultaneously, but it depends. It depends on what kind of an approach, uh, you know, as a teacher you take, what kind of an approach even the software developer takes. But whether it is discrete or integrated, integrated in the sense that, you know, even if you teach a word, that you put that word not in isolation, but of course, even if it is taught in isolation, you put that in meaningful context and make the child use that meaningfully uh, so that pragmatically the child is, uh, you know, uh, enabled for the language uh, use. So the uh, last part is about the gamified uh, learning. Because everything is about uh, games today. Children love games. I think that was this wonderful TED talk, which was, say, says that when uh, when those at deathbed were asked, uh, you know, what is it that you missed the most? You could have done, but you have finished because you've got many other things to do. Uh, most of the people who uh, responded, uh, saying that, no, I wish I played a lot of games online, was what they said. Death, but they thought that they uh, they had spent more time on gaming, and these were, in fact, uh, you know, 
people above 35 and uh, just imagine the condition of kids who really are very much into all these digital natives and they're very much into uh, gamification. And if you look at the statistics also, it to a large extent moves towards gamified learning that around 89% uh, of the respondents, they claim that if a task is gamified, they are very much eager to complete the task. And they are always, to a large extent, uh, in a competitive uh, mode. And when it comes to its impact, gamified learning, its impact on, uh, on, the, on motivation, to a large extent, the gamified act, uh, you know, activities, they increase the motivation of the students by uh, whopping 48%. And when it comes to skill-based assessments, uh, competitive exams, even otherwise, uh, when it comes to uh, even proficiency tests, it's a skill-based exams, again, uh, the participants scored 14% higher on these skill-based assessments. So these four, as a teacher, you have to keep in mind if you want to connect students to teaching and uh, learning of the uh, English. So I think uh, uh, with that, I will uh, leave the forum to the organizers and uh, write their questions. And they, uh, this. Or to my, uh, just, uh, <clears throat> um, I should say, yeah. indeed, uh, 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 Dr. Th thank you so much, uh, Doctor. This is uh, something, uh, uh, you know, indeed wonderful, very informative uh, session. Uh, we have uh, a lot of compliments coming mm -hmm. in from the teachers. <laughs> they have been, uh, uh, yeah, they have been, they have enjoyed the session. They have uh, uh, made a lot of uh, compliments. Uh, uh, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, there are a lot of compliments for you, sir. And now I request uh, uh, all the uh, I request all the teachers, educators here on Zoom as well as on the um, yes, as well as on the uh, uh, live Facebook session that we have uh, simultaneously uh, uh, streaming live. Uh, if we have any questions, we can uh, please put it in the uh, uh, comment box in in the uh, comment box in fa on Facebook and uh, in the Q and A box on the in the Q and A box on Zoom. Uh, so, uh, uh, Doctor, there are uh, some questions on if you could explain uh, an activity. Uh, as an example of scaffolding, as an example of scaffolding, if we can uh, explain some activity, some example uh, for scaffolding. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, from that, that has come up. Now, scaffolding, uh, the expression, uh, the uh, term per se might look, uh, you know, very technical, but it's very simple that uh, either consciously or unconsciously, uh, every teacher uses it uh, when he or she teaches the students. Let's say, for example, when I teach them uh, the expression beauty, uh, if I make use of a visual to support that expression, that visual is an attempt made by a teacher to scaffold teaching of the word uh, beauty. So that is one. And secondly, that procedurally, if you take, for example, that I, I give a task to you. And if I think that the task might be a bit of a difficult for the student to understand, especially that procedure I give, because any task comes with a lot of procedures. If I think that the procedure the student might not be able to understand, it's always better that I give a trial of that procedure with another task, which will make the student easier because when they relate to that procedure, they can easily understand what is expected of them in this particular task is what, you know, in simple terms, scaffolding is all together. 
R says, for example, you use the very word beauty. And if you want a student to use that word in context, that you give, uh, you provide them a situation, meaningful situation, and you also give them umpteen examples of it, this effort by a teacher is what we call scaffolding. So uh, the interesting part is that the teacher has to be aware of it, that it, it should not be unconsciously happening when a teacher does it. A teacher must be aware of the necessity of a scaffolding at this point in time when it comes to teaching and learning of English. I think that's a good question, yes. <laughs> That, that this is uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, so uh, there has been, uh, yeah. So the the teachers in uh, <laughs> so the teachers in the secondary section they have mentioned uh, uh, this uh, uh, this question: How can syllabus be taught within the framework of time? in higher secondary school because in online classes, uh, we don't get the same time uh, framework, time, uh, uh, the luxury of time that we have in a physical classroom. Right, so I can see that. How can syllabus be taught within the framework of time, especially for higher education? Well, it's not only for higher education, it's for everything. Of course, everyone has this uh, issue, but I would like to think it differently. My experience is also quite different. Uh, is that when it comes to online teaching, we tend to complete it much earlier than the stipulated time. Uh, because uh, most often we, uh, we deliver a lecture and students don't respond to us properly. But it took me for some time to you know, understand that I have to quickly modify my teaching uh, you know, to, to uh, the changing uh, times. So this question about, uh, about uh, doing justice to the syllabus or teach within the framework, as I said, that it depends on how well you pre-plan. Most often, one of, the, uh, one of the mistakes that teachers commit is that their efforts lie a lot on the methodology of it, in the sense that methodology meant only to convey the information required Whereas they spent very less time as to what the child or the student has to do with the information communicated to them. So the dissemination of information we are very much interested in, but what the student does with that shared knowledge is something that we don't plan properly. So if you can devote time equally for methodology on the one hand, and also what they do with what we share with them will uh, you know, do a lot of help for both you as well as the student in completing this. And often any task given, uh, it goes without saying, that is connected with what is taught in the classroom. It's 50% from your end, and the other 50% should be from the other end. And I would like to connect it to the other question asked, autonomous learning, how uh, far is it applicable? It all depends on the nature of work that you give to the student. If it is interesting, uh, you know, uh, trust me, they'll be very much interested in doing it on their own and proving it to you that they really have understood the task much better and can do justice to it. You will have to have a platform where they display because that recognition is very important for a student that when they do uh, at home without much of a recognition that if, they, if you uh, provide a platform for the students to share what they've done at home as part of your assignment, they'll be very happy to do that and then you know have it exhibited uh, of the other side. Of course, you can very well make use of Google Classroom for that purpose as well. Uh, get yourself familiarized with one of the uh, one of the platforms available, and then have that uh, you know on uh, exhibited in those uh, classrooms would be uh, interesting for the students. Definitely. Uh, uh, doctor, we have a question from a uh, Facebook Live. Uh, there is an educator, Krishna Priya Shilam. She's asking, uh, in rural uh, <clears throat> India, rural schools, where parents are not literate, um, 
and they do not know English, it becomes quite a challenge to teach uh, uh, any guidance for the rural uh, area teachers, uh, how to make the subject uh, more involving, especially because parents can't, uh, in, uh, you know, parents can't be involved. So how can uh, we make uh, it more interesting for the children in the rural area? Uh, any, any quick tips? <laughs> Subscribe to Reading X. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Right now, see, we, we, we do understand, we do understand everyone. It's not only in rural background, but even otherwise, the working parents do have, uh, you know, because they seem to work a lot more than they do in their offices nowadays. So uh, even those educated ones don't have much time to spend with their own children. That's what I said. I was not talking about exclusively about help from the others. I'm talking, I was just, which of a little activity I just put together. I was just talking about what happens around them, make the children aware of the fact that there is potential in the environment they live in, even if it is locked down, to really have a brush up of their own knowledge and practice it with those limitations. And that even if a parent is a rural parent, they may not know the methodology, they may not know languages, but they to a large extent are very much interested in helping the child, especially develop the English language. I don't know about the other subjects, but when it comes to uh, the English language, the craze among rural uh, parents are much more uh, than that of the urban ones who are very good at English, but the other parents always want their children to use English at home. So, uh, they may not be able to help their children uh, subject-wise. However, they can motivate them. So if you have anything to motivate the parents or any procedure in their own mother tongue, you have to give them, you can give it. Because you need, uh, a parent need not necessarily converse in English to make a child speak English. So we'll have to create an environment with the help of a parent where the child meaningfully learns that English. And of course, software, online learning, or even open access you know, uh, sites are a very good uh, resource for children to learn, only that they have to be uh, you know, channelized properly. So it's to some extent a handicap, but not as handicap as we really make out of it. So that's my, my take on that uh, rural uh, parents and the kids. Who may think of that, this is a, a wonderful. Uh, uh, there is one um, interesting question uh, uh, put up by an educator. Uh, using methods like learn English from newspaper or ads or conversation or listening, which is useful for learning English easily and quickly. Any such uh, uh, unconventional methods that we can suggest to children so that they learn English easily, quickly, they pick up uh, quickly because there isn't uh, so much of time in the classroom and in the classroom teaching. So can we suggest any of these uh, uh, methods that could be, uh, you know, even a life skill kind of? So newspaper ads. Yeah, it sounds like a simple question. Uh, that's what everyone wants to aim at. Uh, easy way out, but uh, uh, you and I very well know that it's not that easy to learn a skill. And especially when it comes to language, it takes time. Secondly, whatever you have listed, be it a uh, newspaper advertisement, all these are materials. Uh, they, in, in you know these materials in themselves don't mean anything, but what you do with the material matters the most. So uh, the the activities that you design based on these materials matter the most. Each uh, every material, every genre, a material has its own uniqueness. If you take a poem, for example, they are very apt for helping students get the right accent, uh, sorry, right stress and the pronunciation of a word, because they are musical in me, so right in the beginning itself. And if you take uh, the advertisements for that matter, if you want to help students be creative uh, and to some extent use language creatively, 
you can make use of advertisements. But the task that you design out of that advertisement is again an important uh, part altogether. And if you look at the newspaper, to a large extent, they are meant for helping students build vocabulary, and especially the current vocabulary. Because if you look at, if you read newspaper, you get to, you know, get a list of new current vocabulary that is in uh, use as well. Again, these are just, you know, uh, means. But what, you know, the what makes these particular materials effective? is a kind of activity you design based on these materials. And these activities much, must be communicative in nature. And I can list out a few. Uh, one is that you call that as problem solving activities. Children love to solve problems. Give them a problem based on the advertisement or based on the uh, newspaper or any anything that you uh, deem essential or anything that you have in the textbook itself and make the students solve that problem. Or you can even have an information gap activity where, uh, no, I hope most of you are aware of that, that uh, you know, uh, one set has the information and the other uh, doesn't have it. And that by asking questions, you can fill in uh, the blanks. Either a teacher can withhold the information or can have have to and then you know ask them you know make them ask questions and fill in by the way they ask questions and then they respond to it therefore a lot of speaking and thinking uh, happens you can even have an opinion gap activity and that's what i said it's about the kind of activities that you really uh, make use of uh, with with the help of these materials that matters the most than the material in itself but easy way out i'm afraid not this it was a lot and lot of practice. And at this point in time, autonomous learning makes a lot of meaning, adds a lot of meaning to it, definitely, yes, because students will have to spend a lot of time on their own and uh, you know make that time so linguistically and communicatively meaningful. Thank you, but again, that's a good question. Yes. A lot of questions I thought, uh, uh, this is one of the worst uh, sessions of mine, given my conditions. But still, these many questions definitely are motivating. Thank yes. you. Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, sir. And uh, we have this uh, recurring question everywhere on all uh, the platforms that are streaming live on. Uh, an example mm. of gamified learning. <laughs> So uh, I, I guess uh, we would sh uh, yeah, show them the Reading Eggs uh, platform as an example of gamified learning. Uh, so do you want to uh, uh, add uh, before, uh, do you want to say something about the Reading Eggs no. platform before we show it? But I think it's better if it comes from you, it would be much better because since you know more than what I do, so I'm really happy. Ji, ji. So uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Nadeem Ansari. Uh, Nadeem ji uh, is here with us. He has joined from Australia, Sydney, Australia. And we are very happy to have, um, uh, like uh, he gets introduced in all our sessions, as the uh, wisest, <coughs> the uh, the uh, wisest uh, uh, and the oldest of us all <laughs> in in this session here today. He is uh, uh, well. In this case, uh, I would beg to differ. I would uh, give that honor of being the wisest to Dr. Lovejoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, wonderful uh, compliments uh, coming from uh, all across for uh, uh, the Dr. John Lovejoy. Uh, and uh, Mr. Nadim has, is joining us from Australia. He's from Blake eLearning, uh, the ones who developed the program, the Reading X program around 15 years ago. Uh, Mr. Nadim is an alumn alumnus of Kirori Mal uh, College, Delhi University. He studied English literature. He has been in the publishing in industry the publishing. for 34 years, since 1986. And with an extensive international experience, he has worked in India, United Kingdom, United 
Arab Emirates uh, and has been based in Australia for last 19 years. He is International Sales and Marketing Manager for Blake Publishing uh, since December 2001. Blake Education Group is Australia's largest independent educational publisher and has been creating exceptional educational content for over 30 years. And uh, from last 15 years, they have this uh, wonderful online uh, uh, learning portal, uh, Reading Eggs. Uh, Nadeemji, uh, please uh, take us to the journey of Reading X. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, it's afternoon here. Should be probably early morning there for you. Uh, I work for Blake eLearning, which, uh, as Shreya mentioned just now, we are the creators of this program called Reading X, which was uh, launched about 15 years ago. And it started as a module to teach children how to read in English. And uh, then we developed the program over the many years. And uh, now it's a full English language course. And uh, I did pick up a few points which Dr. Lovejoy uh, mentioned during his uh, talk. And uh, the first was uh, English, the importance of English especially given the Indian education system where uh, English is the language of, uh, you know, which is used primarily uh, in all private schools in India. So that's why even though it's not the first language in India, it's very important that all children have a very good grasp of the English language uh, for comprehension purposes, because all subjects at a later stage, uh, you know, especially when they get to grades, anything in middle school and going up to high school, uh, going for further education, uh, everything is taught in English, especially all the sciences and mathematics and even social sciences like geography, history, politics, etc. So it's very, very important for the child to have their comprehension skills developed uh, in the English language. And it's not just, uh, I'll quickly go through the program. We uh, have five modules in the Reading Eggs program, which cover, uh, one is uh, for young children, which is Reading Eggs Junior, which is for pre-primary uh, students, kindergarten, etc. Then we have the Reading Eggs module, which is to teach children how to read in English. And then we have the Reading Express program, which is a full English language course, which covers all the important aspects of learning any language. The first thing is the skeleton of any language is the grammar. And then you have all the other associated skills like comprehension and developing and understanding the rules of spelling, uh, developing the vocabulary of a child, and uh, so on and so forth. In addition to that, we uh, also have for ages five to 10, phonics, which is how they are teaching children how to read now. So it's not learning the alphabet, the letters of the alphabet in that order, but learning the, you know, how the uh, letters are pronounced. And so the letter sound, is then associated with the letter name and which make the 26 letters of the English language, but there are, um, as you all know, all the uh, 44 sounds in the English language. Now, Shreya would, uh, we've also been talking about uh, preparing for lessons, especially online teaching. Uh, the, this mod, this whole program, is not just geared up to teach children how to uh, learn English and then the various skills in the English language. It is also a program to assist the teachers in whether it's classroom teaching or it's online teaching. We have various resources which are available in the program. There are PowerPoint presentations, there are videos which can be used by, and uh, in addition to those, uh, which can be used in the classroom or by a teacher 
during an online class. Uh, there are additional resources like worksheets and uh, lesson overviews, et cetera, where the teacher uh, can do what is their main skill, which is teaching children. And all the resources are provided in this program where, uh, you know, even giving a structure of if there is a lesson, so how to start the lesson, what to do during the lesson and how to end the lesson and what activities to do during and after the lesson is over. And then uh, we also, uh, Dr. Lovejoy touched upon the mother tongue influence. Uh, we have, uh, in this program, we have three versions. Of course, there is the Australian version because we are based in Australia. Uh, but we have offices and a large presence in the United States. So we have an American version because half the world uses American English. So if you look at China and uh, most of the countries in the Asian uh, region, uh, including Korea, Taiwan, et cetera, uh, they use the American version, which is, uh, you know, there are differences in spelling, et cetera. And then there is the British version, which is, the actual version, the, uh, the language came from the English. It's their language. And that is why, uh, in terms of uh, accent and pronunciation, grammar, spelling, uh, what we are offering in India is the British version of the whole program. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, talk about scaffolding. Now, uh, the way I use the word, it is slightly different to how Dr. Lovejoy was using it. Uh, we use it in the sense that this whole program, the Reading X program is based on a scaffold math method, whereby there are lessons and skills which are taught to a child. And only once the child is, uh, using the word mastered is quite strong, but has gained that skill and that knowledge, does the child move to the next lesson? So, and how we do that is our benchmark in this program is very, very high. We have a minimum pass re mark requirement of 80% uh, for the child to move from one lesson to the other. How do we get them to do that? It's practice, because the more they practice is the more they learn, the more they retain things in their long-term memory. And how do we get them to practice so many times that they become, uh, if not perfect, at least highly skilled in that activity or in that knowledge? Um, we come to the word gamify. Uh, we do not, I don't think we have the time to show uh, the program in detail to you during this session. But should any one of you wish to have a more detailed look at the program, you can write to uh, my colleague Shreya, or you can contact our local Ratna Sagar uh, person who visits your school, and they can arrange a demonstration just for the Reading Eggs program uh, to show you how the program works. Uh, and there's was some uh, uh, comments and uh, Dr. Joy Lovejoy also mentioned uh, autonomous uh, learning, so which I take to mean as self-paced. Now, this program, it's teacher-driven, but it is also self-paced. To the, um, I mean, the teacher can uh, assign lessons to students, and then the student can do it on their own time. So it is not limited by you know, geography or time or space. The teacher, since uh, you do not have classroom teaching right now, the teacher and the student don't have to be in the same geographical position. They can be in separate places and they can be in separate times. The teacher can actually assign the lesson and whenever the child logs on to the program, they can, the first thing that will pop up is that the teacher has assigned this lesson and the teacher can, I mean, the student can then uh, do the activity. Uh, if there are any questions, then again, Shreya is here. She can answer those, or we can, uh, you know, discuss these with you at a later stage. 
Uh, Shreya, I think there was also the question of uh, how to develop creative writing, et cetera. You could perhaps, if we have two minutes, yes. you could show them the creative writing uh, module we have in uh, Reading X, and then yes. we can look awesome. at the awesome creative writing which we saw from uh, quite a number of the teachers who are present today. I mean, I tell you, I commend all of you. You write beautifully and you write very well. It was one of the most difficult tasks I have faced in this rather, I mean, Shreya mentioned something about my age. In this long and varied life, it was, it's very, a uh, few times that I have read uh, such good writing of such high caliber. So over to you, Shreya. So this uh, story writing, uh, uh, the, the story writing competition for teachers with over um, uh, approximately 400 uh, entries from uh, the teachers, uh, we also have the same similar feature in the Reading Eggs program. This is the Story Factory. Uh, in the Story Factory for Children, we have a weekly story writing uh, contest in Story Factory. So there's a theme given to children and uh, they have to work on that theme. So this, uh, this week, the theme is Dancing Gorillas. Quite interesting. <laughs> so this is creative writing and uh, uh, the children get, uh, uh, like we were saying, scaffolding. Uh, Dr. Lovejoy uh, explained it uh, wonderfully. So the same process we follow here, this is a guided uh, writing practice. Um, the children get to pick from the pictures that they have um, so they can build their story uh, with these scaff with this scaffold with the hints here, uh, and they also have uh, yes my my go gorilla my beautiful gorilla <laughs> ah, so my gorilla can be beautiful too <laughs> so I have a beautiful uh, uh, gorilla right. Um, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I'm so excited, just like the participants are, because uh, uh, yeah, we are going to declare the winners in uh, in in some time. Uh, we have uh, the words here for the children. They could pick from the words that are given here. The punctuation marks are also uh, the punctuation marks are also uh, um, hinted here. The words to start with. The phrases that can be used to start a, a, a sentence, the story, and the phrases uh, by which they could end the story. So wonderful guided writing uh, practice is given here in Story Factory. And every child could become a creative uh, story writer. And that's how the program helps the children. We could even save our work. So uh, great stories cannot be written in a day. And I'm pretty sure the 400 uh, teachers who participated in the story writing competition took quite a lot of time to think. And so, yeah, we allow the children to save their work and then come back because uh, it's a process, story writing, creative story writing is a process. And that's beautifully depicted here in the Reading X program. Uh, we have few questions here on uh, the 44 sounds. Which are the 44 sounds covered? Uh, I would say, uh, why not? We all, uh, uh, you know, sign up for a, a demo uh, account, <laughs> a demo, a free trial for reading eggs. Um, and uh, we, uh, you can get in touch with your uh, 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 Ratnasagar, um, uh, uh, the teammates, the Ratnasagar team who uh, helped you join the session today. Uh, please get in touch with them. They would explain you. They would, uh, uh, yeah, the program has been adopted currently by um, uh, yeah, quite many schools all across India uh, as the uh, English and maths uh, program, uh, because it has wonderful resources for teachers. So the school model of this program of has this been program adopted uh, by uh, many schools all across uh, India. 
and uh, that is how uh, uh, yes we can uh, you can think of um, the program being adopted in your school too i'm just displaying how to uh, sign up for a free trial i'm just displaying the process we'll uh, uh, show the process once again towards the end uh, if anyone wishes to sign up for a free trial they can And now coming to uh, what uh, everybody, uh, you know, on here on Zoom and on Facebook. And yes, there are so many participants who are even messaging us. Uh, please declare the winners. Please declare the winners of the story writing competition. Uh, uh, Nadeem ji, uh, you would uh, take the uh, pride and uh, the honors to declare. Uh, and before that, uh, let us just uh, yeah put down the criteria for judgment. It was very very difficult for the uh, the judges to uh, uh, you know decide the best entries because we had uh, exemplary uh, 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 you know the stories that were written by over four hundred teachers, and so uh, the the criteria that was laid down uh, was organization of thoughts structure uh, was there a proper beginning middle and end and for the beginning there were already prompts uh, 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 that were circulated so whether the prompts uh, were used uh, uh, yeah how the prompts were used to form the beginning uh, originality of ideas and creativity so how original the idea was how creatively it was portrayed, fluency and flow of thoughts, word choice and limit. So we had to put in uh, uh, this uh, criteria, word limit. There was a word limit uh, uh, that was uh, uh, given out. And so uh, many stories that were wonderfully written, but they exceeded 2,000, 3,000 words. And that was, uh, um, you know, the word limit was taken as a very important uh, uh, yeah, criteria and using the prompts. So there were a few very good, uh, uh, wonderfully written uh, uh, stories, but they did not use the prompts that were uh, uh, provided in the uh, uh, competition. And so good entries had to be dropped because of word limit and a non usage of the prompts or, uh, 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 you know, the flow of thoughts, the originality of ideas being uh, uh, compromised. So here are the winners, Nadeem ji, should we go with the third position? Would you please announce the third position winner? Yeah, the, th uh, the third position, uh, the third position, so that, that means uh, that would be third ahead of uh, 450 or 55 people who've entered the competition. So it might be number three here, but it's still ahead of uh, 400 odd people is, uh, oh, before my announcing, it's already there. So, okay, uh, it's we Sasikala uh, from uh, Sri Sankara Senior Secondary School in Chennai, and it's uh, a new beginning. Uh, so the story was a new beginning, and that's the third position. The second position is- uh, is, uh, is, uh, Miss, uh, is Miss Sasikala here in the attendees? <laughs> Is uh, Miss Sasikala here in the attendees? Could she please uh, uh, raise her hand? Oh, yes, uh, Miss Sasikala Venkatesan is here already. Excellent. Ma'am, if you could, uh, uh, you know, just if it is possible for you to unmute and uh, uh, we had judges from Australia. <laughs> so, uh, Nadeem ji, we would like to congratulate uh, Sasikala ji. Yeah, absolutely. Sachikala uh, uh, here. Uh, I have your story right in front of me. It's uh, it's very, very good. And I like how you have. Uh, well, I'm not one of the judges, actually. Uh, you I'm, are. <laughs> uh, I, I'm simply the person who's announcing this, but uh, very well yes. written. I, I think you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> and uh, uh, madam is here ma'am any uh, you want to say one or two sentences Ji. yeah hello uh, good morning uh, all of you i'm sashikla here 
I'm very excited now. And uh, I thank uh, the jury and all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I really had fun writing this. And it was Wonderful. not just a story, it was my true uh, feelings about the new beginning. And I hope the new beginning is going to continue well. Thanks all of you. That Thank wonderful you. thought on that wonderful thought, uh, uh, excellently written. Uh, congratulations, ma'am, once again. Congratulations. There Thank you is very much. A, so there is a special gift hamper waiting for you. <laughs> and now, Nadeem ji, uh, should we come to uh, the second position? Yeah, let me announce it and then you can put it on screen. Otherwise, <laughs> yes. right, it's... Uh, Jerita K from I don't know I don't have details of the school but I'm sure you would yes uh, again about a new beginning and very well written uh, like Sachikala said uh, it's not just uh, imagination it's uh, what she what is going on and what you would like things to be. So, you know, reading your story, Jerita, was uh, very, you know, it just makes one feel the excitement and the sheer joy, uh, the happiness of things. You know, okay, call it the new normal, but yes, uh, one could just feel it so intensely. Very well written. Thank you, uh, Jerita. Are you there? Uh, hi, yes, sir. Miss, uh, yeah, Wonderful. Miss Jerita is uh, here. Congratulations, uh, ma'am. You want Thank to you, say one or two sentences? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity. It's like uh, it's a privilege and pleasure to do this. Uh, I love actually story writing. I heard all this uh, for the past one hour. I was hearing it, and it is really useful for us as a teacher. I'm really benefited, and I'm so happy for this, ma'am. I'll do my work and I am very passionate for writing stories. Thank you so much for Wonderful. this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. A special hamper is uh, waiting for you too. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Congratulations. And Nadeem ji, so now, <laughs> Nadeem ji, the winner uh, uh, would be announced, the first well, position look, the winner. <laughs> uh, every... A anybody and everybody who participated is a winner. Uh, we were the real winners because we got to read these stories. And, uh, but by far the best story, uh, not just in terms of how it is written, but uh, the, the way it has been uh, formatted and how it moves uh, is the topic uh, the Future Calls, and this is by Biju uh, Kilukan. Uh, the title of the story is A Mask-Free World Again. Uh, I must congratulate you, Biju. This has been really very well written. Uh, excellent work. Uh, it's, I think we had to really... Uh, have a bit of a tussle while discussing this, that it's a bit uh, touching the boundaries of uh, getting outside the word limit we had given. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, at times you have to just let the rules be the rules and you just break them. And uh, you have to appreciate a well-written piece for what it is. So. <laughs> Biju, if you're there, please raise your hand and uh, congratulations. You uh, actually got the best story so far. Congratulations, Mr. Biju uh, Kilokan. Uh, a wonderful story written, a mask free world again. Uh, and uh, he's from Tollins World School uh, Kalari. Uh, is Mr. Biju here? I am unable to spot him in the attendees. Uh, or anyone from Tollins World School is here? They may just raise their hand. Uh, is Mr. Biju here? 
or anyone from Tollins. Okay, I can see someone from Tollins School. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, on behalf of Mr. Biju, we have uh, uh, one of the, uh, yeah, so we have uh, someone from the Tollins World School. I would uh, request them to uh, yeah, accept. Uh, uh, the winning hamper on behalf of Mr. Biju Kilukan. Of course, uh, if it was, uh, you know, if it was physically, we were physically present, uh, the hamper would have been <laughs> handed. Uh, but here, yeah, a virtual acceptance. Uh, yeah, G please, uh, uh, from Tollins World School, any colleague uh, of Mr. Biju is here. Go ahead, please. <laughs> G, G. So I, I, I guess uh, uh, yes. So there have there are a, a few colleagues. Uh, yeah. So there are a few colleagues of uh, Mr. Biju Kelukan. They are thanking uh, us in the chat box. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. It was wonderful uh, uh, um, interacting with everyone and uh, uh, discussing uh, this uh, lovely uh, topic. There would be certificate of participation for all the participants. Uh, we have uh, with us, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 yes, we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Nadeem, we have with us Mr. Uh, 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 Loganathan, we have Dr. Uh, John Lovejoy, and joining us on the panel is also uh, uh, Ms. Iman Chaudhary, uh, who is the head of uh, digital uh, initiatives at Ratna Sagar. Um, and uh, uh, yes, uh, from all of us here at Reading Eggs and Ratna Sagar, Thank you once again, everyone. Uh, uh, we are uh, really thankful to all of you for uh, writing these beautiful stories and uh, submitting for this competition. There would be a certificate of participation for all uh, the participants who, uh, and uh, definitely uh, there would be gift hampers for the uh, first, second and third position, the winners of the story writing competition. From all of us here at Ratna Sagar, we thank you all. Uh, I would now request um, Mr. Loganathan, uh, a representative from, uh, especially from, uh, uh, yeah, uh, to, to join us here and uh, propose a formal vote of thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Loganathan. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much, Shreya. Was, uh, I'm really uh, uh, glad to deliver my vote of thanks. Happy morning to one and all present here, uh, eagerly connected online. Uh, keep our children connected with the English language. Yes, we do. After getting this input from you, sir, Dr. John Lovejoy. First and, and, for, first and foremost, I would like to uh, congratulate all the winners today. Thank um, the, today's winners and participants, almost 500 plus. Uh, for their great creativity and critical thinking. They proved themselves that they are all 21st century skilled educators through this opportunity created by Ratna Sagar. Thank you um, all for sending your stories on time for the competition. We Ratna Sagar received the feedback from many schools uh, and managements asking for a program like this so that we teachers, our teachers get relief from their daily routine and their will be a stress buster for them. Uh, then uh, they, they don't have the option to, uh, you know, for physical meeting with the uh, students and no active interactions happening on our days. So all, always engaged online. So then uh, we decided to have this uh, story writing competition for our nation builders. So we Ratna Sagar have the social responsibility to engage them with these kind of activities during this pandemic situation will be um, them feel relaxed and that's uh, it's a great in, uh, investment of time to unleash their potential uh, imaginative writing skills. As we all uh, know uh, through the media, the down south of Tamil Nadu is uh, suffering with heavy rainfall. Our eminent trainer, Dr. John Lovejoy, is uh, now from Nagargoil joined with us. Artful, um, thankful gratitude to you, sir. Yesterday, uh, he met with an accident instantly. Uh, in spite of his severe back pain, he ac accepted to do this webinar for our teachers. Hats off to you, sir, for your great uh, passion towards uh, and dedication 
uh, commitment towards English language and education industry. We would like to uh, uh, thank our region manager, Raghuram sir, and we, the Jua Heads team, like Vinu, you know, Bobby, Emerson, Prasant, Abhilash, uh, and Pascal sir, and our soul of this event, of the entire sales team and marketing editors of Ratna Sagar's family, uh, who promoted to all the schools during the situation. Uh, you know, all the doors are shut, but still uh, this online platform, using this online platform, they all made it happen. Uh, with their uh, great effort to reach out to all the participants today. Thank you so much for all. And our supreme uh, backbone of the program, Sugat sir, Nadeem sir, and Iman ma'am, and Shreya, and Priyanka ma'am, and a million thank, uh, thank to you all. And always with a, with a great support and sincere gratitude to all the family members, especially uh, who supported all the teachers to participate in the story writing competition organized by the Saga family. I really thank each and everyone who had contributed towards this great event to become a grand success uh, during this tough time. I thank you all. Uh, stay home, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Over to Shreya. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, uh, uh, th we are thankful to everyone who participated. Thankful, uh, we are thankful to Dr. Uh, John Lovejoy. And uh, after knowing, uh, sir, that you uh, you met with uh, an uh, adversary and you still uh, are here, and uh, I mean, for the benefit of the teachers, you conducted this session. We have very, very, uh, I mean, heartfelt gratitude. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, um, Mr. Uh, Nadim Ansari, uh, for joining us from Australia. It is an awkward time for you over there, I'm sure. <laughs> and you're still awake and here with us. We are thankful to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the entire team from uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Uh, thank you to Raguji, uh, his entire team. Thank you to Loganathan, sir, uh, Iman, ma'am, uh, Sugat, sir, and the, uh, the entire wonderful team, Ratna Sagar. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, um, stay happy. Uh, um, please take care. Bye-bye. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much, you. sir. Thank you so much. Reading Eggs is the multi-award-winning program where your child will learn to read. And it's proven to work. Used and trusted by more than 10 million children worldwide, 91% of parents report a noticeable improvement in their child's reading skills. Scientifically researched and developed by educational experts, Reading Eggs turns learning to read into a series of fun games and activities. Welcome to Fast Phonics, the complete systematic synthetic phonics program that is both rigorous and full of fun. Learning to read is a complicated process made up of five essential elements. Phonemic awareness, phonics instruction, vocabulary, fluency and comprehension. 
These are the five building blocks that children need to master to become fluent readers. Phonics is a crucial building block, widely acclaimed by researchers, literacy experts and educators. For young children to read English successfully, they need to understand the alphabetic code. There are 26 letters of the alphabet, 44 sounds or phonemes and different ways to spell these sounds. It's important that children learn the association between letters and sounds in a direct and systematic way, which is how synthetic phonics instruction works. The Fast Phonics world is a vibrant mix of dynamic maps and upgrades and exciting learning activities, where kids can earn Yeti coins and gems and have a laugh. Fast Phonics will keep children coming back to laugh, learn and see what's next. Fast Phonics. Learning to read with phonics has never been so much fun. Hi, I'm Buddy, and you can count on me and my Math Seeds friends to make learning all the key maths ideas an exciting and funny adventure. If your child liked learning to read with Reggie and reading eggs, they are going to love the Math Seeds journey into the world of numbers, shapes, time, and much more. Just like Reading Eggs, we have a playroom section for young children who are just starting to learn the very basics. Then we move on to the lesson maps, which teach the key ideas using a great variety of activities. There are lots of pets to collect and golden acorn rewards to earn. And you will be happy to hear that Math Seeds will work on your iPad. It all adds up to a lot of fun and games that will give your child a very positive first experience of what maths is all about and set them up to succeed at school. Get your child's maths brain sprouting with math seeds. The new and improved Reading Express is designed to build your child's reading, spelling and comprehension skills with exciting new lessons and features. Here's what your child can look forward to in the new Reading Express. Now with simpler navigation, your child will find the learning journey easier and more straightforward in Reading Express. They will have direct access to all of the learning areas in the program, including lessons, English skills, the writing press and library, as well as all of the fun, rewards-based parts like apartment, mall and arcade. Reading Express is also now compatible with most tablets, so your child can learn and play on the go. Reading Express lessons now follow an easy map-by-map -map format, featuring 20 new lessons designed to give your child a smoother transition from reading eggs. Now with 220 comprehension lessons, your child will enjoy a balance of literature and non-fiction texts, which increase in complexity as they progress. The lessons cover years 1 to 6 and include 44 complete books and assessment tests. The all-new Reading Express spelling program is designed to help your child learn to spell while improving their reading writing and comprehension skills. The exciting new learning area features over 200 lessons that let your child progress through three levels of difficulty. Each lesson begins with a short video explaining specific spelling patterns, rules and generalizations. Each lesson also comes with two downloadable worksheets that your child can complete. Each lesson in the spelling program focuses around a list of 30 words which vary in complexity. Your child will answer 20 different questions based on each word list, including recalling and writing missing words that appear on the screen, listening exercises, proofreading and completing the sentences. Your child can level up 
unlock built-in reward games and track their own performance with progress bars and level indicators. Lessons end with a 10-word quiz that matches your child's level based on their responses to the 20 questions. They will receive instant feedback on how well they scored and can repeat lessons to improve their final score. Your child can now access hundreds of new titles in the Reading Express Library. The library has more than 2,000 e-books on its shelves spanning quality literature, poetry and drama texts, as well as a wide range of informational texts. The new Reading Express will also include the stadium where your child can compete in real time against other students or against the computer. The new and improved stadium will allow your child to select who they would like to play against, including students from their class, school or from different parts of the world. The exciting head-to-head -head contest is designed to test essential skills in spelling, vocabulary, usage and grammar. We hope your child will get a lot more out of the new and improved learning experience with Reading Express. Happy learning! Welcome to Reading Eggs Reporting, our comprehensive new reporting module where you can easily track your students' progress in reading, spelling and comprehension skills. From your teacher dashboard, click on Reading Eggs Reports in the side navigation. This opens your Reading Eggs Reporting dashboard, where you'll see an overview of your class's progress, with clear data on reading course progress, Lexile gain, quiz scores, spelling lessons and books read. Click here for our brand new Time on Task metric. You can also easily toggle to Table View by selecting this icon. At the top of the dashboard, select the date range of the data you wish to view. Export and print options are available for each report. When in the chart view mode, your combined class data is clearly displayed. You can drill down for detailed reports by simply clicking on the corresponding charts or selecting from the side navigation. When accessing detailed report pages, a class average chart remains at the top of the page. Below, you can review individual student progress for each child in your class. Within these reports, you can easily sort the data at the top of the table. This allows you to sort your students alphabetically or by a specific reporting metric. We've made it easy to jump to a specific student at any time. Use the search function to quickly find and view data for specific individuals in your class. Click on a student's name to go to their individual reports to view each student's progress within the program. The student table view provides an easy-to-navigate snapshot of student progress, usage and Lexile gains. To drill down further into the detailed results for that student, simply click See More to get a comprehensive understanding of their Reading Eggs results.